So we do a lot of grinding of squareness here. And for bigger parts, I might use something like this squaring chuck from Herman Schmidt. It's very versatile and it's pretty quick. For a smaller one piece workflow, I like a grinding vise. You can clamp, grind one side, rotate the entire vise assembly without unclamping, grind the other, and uh, you get pretty good squareness that way. For really, really small parts though, there's some unique challenges and neither one of those fixtures really is appropriate. And so for small stuff, I like to go with a toolmaker's cube with some clamping accessories. Uh, the most important part is the adjustable fence or rib. So if you've ever done a small part in a vise, you know there's a constant battle of finding the right size parallel to get the part to stick out of the vise just enough, but not too much. Uh, you want as much part in the vise to establish squareness as possible, um, but sometimes you're sticking out too high uh, sometimes you, you are a little too close to the vise. And uh, so by having this adjustable rib, you can raise it up and down to match your parts height exactly. And uh, you're, you're never searching for parallels. Uh, now there's a second problem with really small parts and that is your typical squareness measuring setups don't work very well on them. And we'll show you why later. But uh, so there's a procedure called common side grinding where you always have the same side of the part against the fence and as long as you follow that you'll be able to determine if your part is square based on how parallel your part is and I'll break that down a little more here in a second um, but it, it not only allows you to measure the squareness on a part you couldn't otherwise measure but it's very fast you're measuring that height dimension and the squareness in one go and so if you have volume and you need to do 100% inspection on 100 parts, uh, it can save you quite a bit of time. And it's one of these little tricks I use, I guess, a lot to speed up things in my shop and uh, thought I would share it with you. And so if you like it, please give me a like and subscribe. I, uh, I've been enjoying growing the channel and uh, I get a kick out of doing these videos. So thank you for watching. Here is a typical square checking setup. It's just a standard height gauge with the indicator flipped around to the back side, and that allows you to compare each side to the other for squareness. Most square or height gauges offer something like this, but they all kind of lack uh, capacity to check smaller parts. You can see the indicator won't go much below an inch and a half. You can also use a sliding gauge like this PMC Lone Star, but it's a little clumsy for something so small. Luckily, I have this comparator gauge, which is ideal for short parts, but even it is at its limit for how short of a part it can check at a half of an inch or 12 millimeters. So this part's ideal for common side grinding, and it'll make checking it a lot easier and a lot quicker. So for this demonstration, this represents our comparative gauge and the, the yellow pieces represent our part. So the way comparative gauging works is you place your part up against the bottom stop of the gauge and the indicator will measure how far away or how into the indicator tip it is leaning. And then you measure the 180 degree opposite of it and splitting your total indicator reading in half tells you how much this is leaning over the length. And then you can even go a little bit further and assign a tilt per whatever unit, centimeters, inch, and then apply that tilt per unit to the base. And that can actually tell you how much you need to shim in order to correct it and get it to stand perpendicular. This comparative measuring only works when both sides are perfectly parallel. So if you have a non-parallel part, and you try this, you could very well get a perfect zero, zero reading on your gauge, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's square. It just means that these two angles are the same, not necessarily 90 degrees square. So keep in mind when comparative measuring, it has to be flat and parallel. One of the really nice things with the Toolmaker's Cube is the resolution you have at setting how high above the fence your part sits. 
uh, with a vise, most parallels move in eighth inch increments. Uh, but this, you can you could park that fence wherever you like, and it really makes small, fine resolution parts really easy to accommodate. You just slide the fence down and lock it. You can also move the screw tip around and at different angles and lock it as it suits. So for the Toolmaker's Cube with an adjustable rib, you always want to mark your side that's going to be against the rib. Sometimes there's a feature like a counterbore or a slot that I'll use to one side and that's how I remember but you set it up by adjusting your rib to the appropriate part height and then you'd lock your screws and then you can grind but there's there's some pitfalls in that this needs to be very clean to work and grinding is very dirty so sometimes what can happen is during setup you get a piece of grit between the rib and the toolmaker's cube and then when you clamp your part it tilts like so uh, the other the other scenario is you get a piece of grit down the corner and when you clamp your part it tilts like so and so what happens there is when you uh, clamp your part tilt it on an angle and then you grind the top of it your part now has a face that's flat to the grinders ways and then when you flip it 180 degrees same face against the rib and repeat that process it now has another face that's flat to the ways but you've produced a trapezoidal part however when we toss this up on the surface plate and go to measure the thickness we'll see that that out of parallelism and so in just the act of measuring the height or thickness of the part we're also verifying that it's square because if it's perfectly parallel with this process, it also means it's perfectly square. So now I'm going to take a piece of 2000 shim stock and kick the fence out of square to the toolmaker's cube intentionally. We'll then grind apart and see the effect that it has on the parts parallelism. So normally I'd take all the stock in one shot, but in this case I just want to dust a few tenths off each side because I want to turn this into a finished functional part when I'm done. Uh, I want to have stock to make it a good part yet, so I'm just kind of creeping my way down. So we'll flip it. I like to slide and that kind of lets me feel if there's any grit under it, and then I'll tap it with a brush handle. Uh, when I'm tapping, I'm trying to feel through the handle if the part bounces, and that lets me know that it's down solid. I need to mention that this is only applicable as a process for checking parts if you're doing the parts. If you're in an inspection and somebody brings you a part to check, you don't know that they used the same side against the rib, and so you can't trust this as a way of checking that it's going to be square. Uh, it, it's really just to verify and do in-process checks on your own work. So now we'll take it to the surface plate and see what we're dealing with. And we can see front to back, there's about a thousandths, maybe eight tenths run out. Uh, and so that's the trapezoidal shape we were talking about, showing that it's not in fact square. Now we've removed the shim and we've set things up as it should be. We've ground one side, we'll flip it 180 degrees, common side against the fence still, and we'll grind the other. And again, feeling. You could put your finger on the part and tap and that gives you a little better sense of feel. Uh, you you'll just you'll feel like a vibration or the part jump if any grits under it
So I'm taking all the stock in one shot using the peel grinding technique I laid out in an earlier video. And then I'll just do a few spark out passes. Time for the final inspection. So we'll zero out our gauge with a half inch gauge block. And then we'll run and check front to back for parallelism. And then we'll check side to side. And as you can see, we're sitting pretty parallel, under a tenth. And then we'll just verify what we're seeing over here. So that's how I check small stuff.